Only things I had left, was the need for revenge, and the spare key to her house. If you like true revenge stories, you found the best place for your vengeful needs. In this episode, we start off with a dirty customer that leaves a present for the employees, but the employee who cleans it, shifts his entrepreneurial focus on revenge. Followed by an entitled Karen for an aunt who refuses to pay for services, and gets a free home makeover. Lastly, besting a travel insurer at their own game, aiming for revenge in pure style. Before we start, pretend to be an employee of McDonald's, tell the like button there's something wrong with its hamburger, say you have to take it back and you'll send a new one. Enjoy your free burger. Let's dive in. Naturally, viewer discretion is advised. These revenge acts might be disturbing to snowflakes. I work at a restaurant where the employees are overworked and underpaid. Despite this, everyone is cool with each other and management. The evils that mess up our day, are the customers and are by the book district manager who drops by every now and then. For about three months, we had someone in the men's bathroom come in and smear an ungodly amount of fecal matter all over the handicap stall of the men's bathroom. Sometimes they'll even fling some outside of the stall onto another toilet or a wall. Of course, management sends one of us peons to clean it up. Fortunately for me, I never had to as I worked the cash register. The one co-worker, who we'll call Arthur, was who I'd call the personification of pettiness. He was crazy and had a smart mouth and an explosive temper when pushed too far. Me and Arthur were cool. I never had problems with him, but management always had him clean out the bathroom when it was poo smeared. One day, Arthur came in on his day off to get some food. After placing his order, he went to use the restroom. While there, he heard someone moan and groan having a massive doo-doo storm in the handicap stall. He didn't think much of it, even when he smelled that god-awful scent. An older gentleman around 50 exited the stall. Arthur, came out and noticed the smell was even stronger than before. Curious, he peeked into the stall and noticed the poop smears all over the place. Infuriated, he asked the old man if he had done that and why would he even? The old guy said with a doo-doo eating grin, look, I don't care. I just want to ruin some poor prick's day. Arthur was set off nuclear mode, as he was that poor prick. Initially, Arthur wanted the clock the guy right then and there, but in his own words, time slowed down around him and all he saw was red. Arthur didn't say anything to the man, instead washed his hands and sat back down waiting for his food. He sat on the opposite end of the restaurant, but the location provided an overview of the entire floor. He could see the old guy at his booth munching away like nothing happened. Of course, someone complained that there was doo-doo smeared all over, and one of the other employees that Arthur was cool with had to go clean up the mess. Arthur caught the old guy looking on at the situation and grinning to himself. Seeing that, Arthur thought the man needed to be taught a hard and hurtful lesson. The old guy finished his food and drove home. Little did he know that Arthur was following him. He ends up following old guy to his home and stakes it out for an hour. Arthur does this for a couple of weeks. Following him home, learning about this guy as quick as possible. Even on days off, he drove over to where he lived and followed him to both the restaurant and to the old guy's company. Arthur gotten a rough idea of this guy's work and sleep schedule. So it was time to enact his revenge. Going by the information he acquired about the guy's activities and the neighborhood he lived in, Arthur figured out that this guy lived well enough to survive, but had no means of backup if something were to happen. Arthur had a three-part plan for him. First act, in the dead of night, Arthur went to the old guy's house. He slashed one of the tires. The old guy drove a jeep, so Arthur opened the spare tire compartment and poked a small hole in it. The old guy woke up the following morning to find his tire flat. According to Arthur, the old man was on the phone freaking out, because he was going to be running late for work and really didn't have the money to get a new tire. Not only that, to Arthur's surprise, the old guy didn't know how to change a tire. The old guy spent nearly two hours in the hot Texas morning heat on the phone with someone on how to put the spare tire on. This is important for later in this act. At this point, Arthur is foaming at the mouth with excitement. 
the old guy drove on the spare to work only to find out that afternoon that the spare went flat. Even more frustrated, the old man drives the car to a nearby auto shop to get both tires serviced. Later that night, Arthur slashed three out of four of his tires. Remember when old guy was on the phone getting instructions on how to get his tire fixed? Well before that, he had called his car insurance company to get someone to come out and fix his tire. He was very loud and the gist of the conversation was that the insurance company wouldn't come out and fix his tire and couldn't get them insured, because all four tires weren't blown out. They said it would be easier and least expensive to just change the tire himself and get another. So later that night, Arthur slashed the other three tires except for the new one. Arthur wasn't there that following morning, but he knew that the old guy surely had a meltdown. That and he didn't show up to the restaurant for a month. Piggybacking on the first act, Arthur would regularly check on old guy's car. When all the tires were replaced, Arthur went to the old guy's house late at night and poured a gallon and a half of sugar and bleach into the gas tank. His car had one of those manual gas covers instead of the modern button inside the car, so no one was none the wiser. In the morning during Arthur's stakeouts, the old man started his car up and left for work, only to get halfway there before the car stopped working. So old guy had to get his car towed to his house. The final act was beautiful, Arthur got the old guy's name from the phone conversation and searched him on Facebook. He downloaded a couple of good pictures of him and created a few flyers. Due to the old guy's car being unusable, he wasn't able to come into the restaurant to do his usual crap. Pun intended. Arthur printed the flyers out and posted them all over the restaurant. The flyers had a picture of the guy, his name, and described what he did in bathrooms for the past few months. A few days later, the old guy comes in with a friend. The friend goes ahead and orders while the old guy runs to the bathroom. One of the co-workers spotted him and notifies everyone there including the friend. Old guy starts to do his thing in the stall, until he sees the flyer with his face on it. He storms out of the bathroom, flyer in hand, angrily demanding for the person responsible to step up to him. Arthur steps up in his uniform and claims responsibility. The old guy begins threatening to sue for slander and emotional damages and other offenses, to which Arthur simply says with an equally doo-doo eating grin. Look, I don't care. I just want to ruin some poor prick's day. Old guy's soul momentarily leaves his body, as he realizes that the same guy he confessed his crime to weeks ago was one of the employees. The managers arrive and ban the old guy from the restaurant. Old guy threatens to ram his car into the windows to which Arthur says, Is your car a unicycle? Better check your tires you frick nugget. Old guy then realizes that Arthur was behind the attacks. Banned from the restaurant, no hard evidence of Arthur's vandalism and extreme embarrassment, old guy decides to bow out. Haven't seen or heard from him since. Unfortunately, fast forward a month and two nights ago, Arthur got arrested from fighting an off-duty officer at a convenience store. My cousin, who is fairly entitled, asked me to do some lawn work and dog sit for her when she was going on vacation. She had to go to a friend's wedding or something along the lines of that. I agreed under the condition that I would be paid $15 per hour, as she had a large garden with many flower beds. Everything was fine and we agreed. She would have no worries about her garden, home and dog and I would help while earning some money. So for a week I tend to her flowers and other yard things such as picking weeds, watering the lawn and picking up dog doo-doo. She comes back and plainly refuses to pay me disregarding the deal we had, but had me do the work anyway for free. Only thing I had left was the need for revenge. And the spare key she gave me to her house. In her spare time, she likes to go up to the mountains for a bit, just because it's fun and why not. So I go into her house. I know that trash day is the next day so, I proceed to the dumpster and take out two or three bags of trash and dump them out all around her house. I pick up the dog poo from the backyard and put it in the bedroom under pillows. Then, I take the trash still in the bin and add that to her house. Finally, I go to a local hardware store and get some weed killer that will also kill other plants. I found out that the hard way. I spray that all over her garden. On the flower beds, the grass and the vegetable garden. 
I did this for two days, while she was away. When she comes back, her entire house is wrecked. The trash attracted pests, the poo in the bed has ruined the pillows and mattress. Her whole garden is destroyed. She had to pay to get her house deep cleaned, a new mattress, replant all her vegetation and get new grass for both yards. She paid $5,000 for something that should have costed her $210. Moral of the story, pay someone for doing work for you, pretty please. In 2013 my dad passed away, while my brother and I were on our own independent international adventures. I was in Spain, my brother was in Canada and we needed to get back to Australia. My travel insurance was dodgy but eventually paid out after a few complaints, which is pretty standard practice. My brother tried to claim $9,000. He could only get one emergency seat on a bunch of connecting flights and with that and his flight back after the funeral etc., and other cancellations, it all added up. Shock horror, his claim was rejected. Back then, there wasn't an industry body that dealt with travel insurance companies or if there was, we had no idea what it was. So my brother went through the usual hurdles involved with the appeals and complaints process. Eventually they told him that his claim for $9,326 was rejected and their determination was final. So back then, companies didn't really have Twitter handles, especially not insurance companies. So my brother, ever the troll, created a Twitter handle in this insurance company's name, complete with their official logo. He quickly set about gaining thousands of followers and legitimately began answering their questions with truthful albeit, quite negative responses. Things like when asked, my daughter and I want to travel to Paris. What insurance cover would you recommend? He would answer, we would recommend you take the premium for our comprehensive cover and burn it. We don't like to pay out on for any insurable event, because it upsets our shareholders. Have fun in Paris. The insurance company got wind of this and sent him a cease and desist letter. My brother counter offered with a contract for the company to purchase the Twitter account and 2,500 potential customers, for the very reasonable price of $9,326. They agreed. Thank you for enjoying this episode, which was made with artificial love. Subscribe or give Royal AI some sugar by avenging the like button. Could you imagine doing one of these acts yourself? Share your experience below. I'll join the conversation.